So it is five and we have started to record the talk. So hello everybody. Uh, welcome to the last webinar of this year's uh, series of webinars with Glomcom and the RPS. I'm Nikola Kozakovki from uh, the Medical University of uh, Vienna in Austria and also chair of um, the Education and Training Committee of the RPS. It is my pleasure to introduce today's speakers, Candice Rufos, who uh, is going to talk about uh, updates of the Banff classification. Thank you, Nicholas, for the introduction. Can you see my slides and can you hear me? Yes. Excellent. So um, I want to thank uh, Glomcom very much for asking me to come and present this. Um, the It's very timely, actually, because the BAMF reports are going to be appearing online open access very shortly if they haven't already. So uh, this will serve as an introduction for all of you who want to catch up on those publications when they appear very soon. So this is my the structure of my talk. It's very classical. I'm just going to give you a very brief introduction to the Banff classification, just so that we're all on the same page. I'll spend most of the talk giving you a, a sort of overview of the Banff 2022 meeting and the output of that meeting. So really the update to the classification. And then finish again briefly with a few words on some unresolved issues and future directions for the classification. So I'm sure most of you are aware that the Banff classification for allograft pathology was first developed in 1991 in Banff, Canada, hence the name. And this was a consensus of pathologists and clinicians and nephrologists and surgeons seeking to agree a common way of classifying kidney transplant biopsies to promote uniformity in diagnosis, both for patient management and also for the purpose of clinical trials. And the Banff classification has gone on to be very successful and has essentially kept the structure that it had when it was first developed in 1991, which I've just taken from this abstract uh, from this first meeting and com comprises two components, one of which is a granular scoring system so this component up here, I'm hoping you can see my arrow, but perhaps maybe you can't, I don't know. Um, activity and chronicity scores of the BAMF classification. So this is a, a sort of semi-quantitative granular scoring of all the features that we see in the biopsy. And the other component of which are these diagnostic categories, which give a, an overall diagnostic headline to what the biopsy shows. So these two elements are both part of the classification, and, and that hasn't changed since the classification was developed. The semi-quantitative granular scoring has a lot of advantages, and, and one of these is really to give you an idea of what the biopsy looks like. So if you look at the BAMF scores, which are on a scale from zero to three, for a whole series of activity and chronicity elements throughout all the compartments of the kidney, you can visualize what the biopsy is going to look like here in this case, in this example, a biopsy with quite a bit of tubular interstitial inflammation, uh, but very little chronicity. And if you compare that to another biopsy showing an increase in chronicity and higher total inflammation scores, you can also start to visualize how that biopsy might differ, differ from the previous one that you saw in that it has more widespread chronicity and more widespread inflammation as a proportion of the total cortex. So that semi-granular scoring, scoring gives you a lot of information on what the biopsy looks like down the microscope. The way the Banff classification works is essentially to combine these Banff lesion scores along with some other parameters to produce the Banff diagnostic categories. So depending on the various thresholds that you need to reach a diagnosis of rejection, you can combine Banff scores of I, T, V, G, P, T, C, et cetera, to reach diagnoses of borderline T-cell-mediated rejection, antibody-mediated rejection. 
When the uh, BAMF Working Group for Rules and Dissemination was putting together the document for the BAMF website that brought together all of these uh, components to have a sort of single repository of the BAMF content, it became apparent that... Mm -hmm.